everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is Tinka so in today's tutorial we are going to be making this gown and here are the required measurements so let's get into it so for this tutorial today we are going to be using Chantilly lace because that's what they use inside the picture sent to me and then lining for the sleeve or satin for the sleeve so you can see they use satin to line the chantilly for the sleeve after cutting it out but i'm going to be using this ankara fabric for my sleeve and also for the collar all right because i would like to have a tie of this ankara fabric so that everything can look elegant chantilly lace this is the major fabric you need you can use it to sew it from beginning to the end and of course you'll be needing thread and zipper for the back i want you to have zipper at the back for easy wearing you will also be needing crinoline for the sleeve be needing crinoline so i'm using four yards of um, this lace this lace here is four yards so this is four yards what you need to do is just for you to fold the four yards into two like this like this you can see this upper part here is on fold and you can see the way i folded it so put on your table so my four yards is folded into two that's why so if you measure from here to the hem you will have two yards because the four yards is already folded into two you can see this upper part here is on fold it doesn't really matter whether it's on fold or not but i'm just telling you it's on fold all right so the next thing you want to do is to fold it diagonally like this the way you see me do here can you see the way i folded it i folded it diagonally into four it's not a complete folding like a triangle you can see just slightly like this i make sure the four edges meet here you can see the four of them matches properly at this other hand that's will guide you in knowing whether you fold it correctly or not that should guide you folding it you can see that they are no longer equal here you can see that they are no longer equal here so look for a position that you know that is straight that you have the four of them on a straight line then you rule it so you rule it this is going to be your starting point for it not to be confusing you can just decide to trim it now at once so that you can know where you're starting from so the next thing you want to do is to from here now you measure down the length of your gown my gown length is 60 inches so i'm going to measure in 60 then i'll add one inch for my seam allowance that's going to be 61 inches so i'll measure the 61 inches all the way down so I'll measure my 61 inches here that's my 61 inches point then the next thing you want to measure from the starting point you measure down your nipple points my nipple point is 10.5 so I'll make a point and then I'll rule it that's going to be my armhole can you see it so this is our starting point this is my nipple point and of course we already measured the length of our gown so the next thing you want to do on this your starting point line you input your shoulder measurements my shoulder is 16 divided by 2 that would be 8 inches then if, if you notice the it's like a kimono bodice so i'm going to be adding 5 inches from the shoulder to where the sleeve is going to start from it's going to be like five inches so from here now i'll measure five inches can you see it like this all right so the next thing you want to do is to come to the center here this folded edge here is your center front as well as your center back so i'll measure three inches then i'll come to this point you can see this is my shoulder and then this is the extension of five inches so at that extension of five inches you come down by one and a half inch come down by one and a half inch and then you're going to connect it back to this neck width 
Can you see it? Then you're going to add half inch Same allowance, half inch like this. Then you connect it back this way. Thing you're going to be doing now is to come to this your nipple point measurement. You're going to be inputting your bust circumference measurement divided by four. My bust circumference is 40 divided by four, that will be 10. I'll put 10. Then I'll put one inch ease because it's very free. I'll put one inch ease. Then one inch same same allowance. Okay. Next thing you want to do now is to measure your round sleeve here, your round sleeve measurements at this your upper arm measurement. Mine is uh, mine is 14 inches. So 14 inches divided by two that will be seven inches. So from this line here, measure seven inches downward. And then of course you know it's going to have joining for sewing so add extra one inch to it that's going to be eight inches wow it fell on the same line with this it can go beyond your nip it can come down beyond your nipple point it does not matter it can go a little higher it does not really matter but mine fell exactly on this line now all right so the next thing i'm going to do now is for me to connect this way Can you see the way I've connected the point? So from this point now, you are going to be flaring it all the way to the extreme end of your line. Just flare it all the way to that extreme end. is what we have here but in case if it did not fall on the same line it does not matter please pay attention doesn't matter it can go above or it can come below but ensure your length measurement is accurate so from here now just ensure that you have your length measurement all around be sure your length measurement is there you can see i have my 61 inches my 61 inches like that like that like that but in case you measure yours and it's not it's not up to your length you can decide to add some extra fabric at the point that is having shortage the next thing i'm going to do now is to input my neckline i'll be using three and a half inches for my neck width and then for the back neck depth i'm going to be doing one inch then I'll connect it together. Don't forget this fabric is folded into fours. What that means is both the front and the back are folded together. All right, so I'll go ahead now. I'll cut this out. Then I'll remove the inner layer that was going to be for the back. Then I'm going to come back and reshape the front neckline to my desired length. All right, so this is how my pattern is looking. So I'll go ahead now. I'll remove the inner layer. That's going to be for the back. Then I'll come back. I'll reshape the front neckline. The front neckline is going to be a V neckline. You can do any neckline of your choice. You must not necessarily do what I'm doing. But I'm going to be doing a V neckline in front. Because I'm going to be attaching collar to that V neckline. And I'm going to be explaining this collar in the next video. So please make sure you watch the video that is coming up immediately after this particular one. So that you can understand it better. Alright, so the width for this neckline is three and a half, As you can see before we cut it out. And the depth is one inch for the back. So I'll remove the inner one. That's going to be my back. So take it out of the way and then you fold this one back the way it is. So the next thing now is to input is to input the front neck depth. For the front neck depth, I'm going to be using seven inches. And you know we already use one for the back. So meaning this one now, you can just do it this way. Place one where your measurement is starting from, and then you measure your seven inches this way. Connect. From the neck width here the neck width remain the same so from the neck width here connect it to that point this way so 
so since my my round sleeve measurements fell directly on my bust line i'm going to notch that line because so that when i'm sewing i will know that this is where my ham hole is this is where my sleeve is, is starting from so that by the time i'm closing the side i will know how to go about it all right so that because it, it blends now you yeah. not put notches here i may not be able to tell by the time i'm sewing so now i've put notches here so that by the time i'm sewing i will know that this is where i'm starting my sewing from this part here is for my sleeve opening all right so now that we are done cutting the front neckline we are going to bring back the back i'll just remove the front completely so i'll bring back the back because the back is going to the back is going to have zip but i'm going to be putting a very short zip so that you know it's going to have a color if it doesn't have zip it may be very difficult for me to wear so that it can be easy for me to wear i'm going to slit the center back for about so from here now from the neck, the neck depth at the back i'm going to measure five inches downward i'm going to slit up to that point because it's going to have opening so that it can be easy for me to wear you can start to put a button at the back but i'm going to be adding this metal zip so that it can hard can make it look more fancy okay so this is it from here to here is just five inches so we are done cutting the body this is how it looks now this is the front this is the front if you open it up this is the front it's a flare dress so it's not so big like not so big this is how the front looks like all right so and then this is the back this is the back and see we slit the center back so first before because because before i cut out the sleeve we have to join the side like more like we are going to complete the old dress before we attach the sleeve because we need to measure round the ham hole circumference so that we can know how to calculate the radius for the flay you can see at the sleeve round we have flay so before we do that what i'll do now i'll fold the back into two like this then i'll take to the sewing machine from where my slit stop here i'll go in from here now just measure half inch then you sew and then gradually blend this like we are sewing in a dart so that you can hand it nicely then we are going to be inserting we're going to be fixing the collar and all of that but this is how you're going to fit because i like i said i'm going to be attaching zip and i want the zip to run through to the collar upward all right but if you like you can decide to put a button just create a loop and put button at the back so from where my slit stop here i'll just measure half inch inward and from that half inch i'm going to sew and then gradually blend it back to the center back like i'm sewing in a dart then after that i'll join both the front and the back together just match them together right side to right side and then you join the shoulders together with half inch seam allowance and then after that you close the side with one inch all the way down or by the number of allowance that you had all right so i'll first walk on the back before i'll join the shoulders together so like i said i'll fold the back together first and starting from where my slit stop here i'm going to so with half inch as if i'm sewing in a dart like this and then i'll end it back to the center back like i'm sewing a dart so when you're done doing that you have something like this can you see you have something like this so the next thing i'm going to do now is to, to join the shoulders together so match both front and back together right side to right side and then you're going to join together with half inch at the shoulder all right so i've joined the shoulders together so the next thing you're going to do now is to close the side also 
just close the side so this is the way I'm going to close the side from where my notching is you can see my notch here from where my notch is I will sew like this and then sew it all the way down so I'll start my stitching from here first I'll sew it like this one inch and then from that one inch I'll sew it all the way down then when I'm done I'll just notch this corner can you see measure from here now measure one inches in what they sew on that one inch and then from there all the way down So I'm done joining it together at the neckline. So don't forget, like I said, you're going to be notching the corner so that by the time you turn it to the good side, it can be it can turn out nicely. Notch the corner. Can you see like this? Do the same thing to the second side. You notch the corner so that by the time you turn turn it out to the good side, can be it can turn out nicely. So you can see the way it is now. Wow, so fine and gorgeous. So just measure the circumference of your sleeve opening. Start from the underarm. Measure it all around. So here I have I have exactly 16 inches 16 inches here that is what I have here exactly 16 inches and that's what I'm going to be using I'll go ahead now and I'll use this circumference to calculate my radius for the peplum it's going to be 720 degree peplum for each sleeve meaning you're going to be having two circles to join together to form one for each of the sleeve you need to cut out two two circles for each of the sleeve that is 720 degree peplum so that it can be very wavy you don't want to use just 60 degree peplum so i will go ahead and cut that and you need to cut out lining for it for each of the circle meaning at the end of the day if you're using the same fabric to cut out both the lining and the and the circle it's going to be four four circle each on each of the sleeves so the circumference for the armhole area of my dress is 16 inches 16 inches and i want to cut 720 degree peplum for it so meaning i'm going to divide that 16 inches by two before i even start so 16 divided by two that will give me eight inches so eight inches divided by eight. by 6.28 that's going to give me 1.25 1.25 so that is the radius for calculating the circumference for my round sleeve measurement. I'm supposed to subtract 0 0.5 from this measurement, but because we still need to join the circles together, so I'm not going to subtract that. So I'll use the same 1.2 as my radius directly. I will not subtract anything from it. So you are going to be folding your fabric into 16 fold. So this fabric is folded into 16 folds, 16 folds, all right? This part here is unfold and here also is unfold. My radius is 1.2, so I'll rotate 1.2 all around like this. Then after that, you determine the length you want for that flounce, for that peplum. In my own case, I think I'll 
do five and a half together with allowance and everything i'll do five and a half so we just rotate the five and a half then after that i'll cut it out all right so if i open this now i'll have four circles four circles so two for each of the sleeve but then you still need to cut out lining for this four circles like this so i'll still go ahead i'll still cut out another four because I want to use the same fabric as my lining so i'll go ahead i'll cut another set exactly the same way so i've cut out another four that's going to serve as the lining so this is four and then this is so this is it so you go ahead now you slit it one by one just lift it one by one like this. So together with the lining and the sleeves, we have eight circles of this. So, and I've cut open each and every one of them. So what you need to do now is to, for you to take it, like you take two, two, and then you take to the sewing machine and then you join two together to become one this is two circle now see this is two circle we already slit open one side so take to the sewing machine you're going to join these two circle together to become one circle can you see so you're going to Go to the same machine and you're going to do that and at the end of the day you're going to be left with four circle but then you join two to become one all right so i'll go ahead i'll do that Them together so we now have four pieces now so one with the lining for the other so what you need to do now is to take to the sewing machine again use them around you mash two together right side to right side and then you're going to turn the m line all around with half inch seam allowance do the same thing to the second one two like this join them together right side to right side and then you're going to join together with half inch allowance all around Before you turn it to the good side, you need to attach crinoline to the hem line. What you want to do now is to attach your crinoline to the hem line. You can see the way it is like this. You're going to start sewing your crinoline like this. You will not allow your crinoline or your new seam line to pass through the previous, to come in what more than the previous seam line. So just place your crinoline at the tip like this and then you're going to sew all around. But you will not allow the new stitch you're making that is the one you're using to sew the crinoline to touch the previous one
all right so we are done with one we also did repeat the same process to the second one then after that you turn it to the good side and you iron it once you don't cross that that previous line it will be easy for you even if there's no iron for you to iron it will still relax it everything will just be nice to do now is just to turn it to the good side that way the chronoline will be sandwiched in between the fabric like I said, you don't have to wash it. You don't need it. You can see the way it is. Everything will just relax and perfect. Can you see? Perfect. Even though we've not even high on it, it's already looking perfect. That's how to sew a crinoline. I've shown you one tutorial like that where I show you how you can do it. This is just the little secret to perfection. This is for you to attach it to your dress. Right, but for it to be very easy for you, you can just, just sew the two ends together, the two mouths, the two openings, just match them together and stitch it all around. I'm loving this and it's so neat and beautiful. All right, so the next thing now is to attach this sleeve to the dress. I'm going to be attaching it to the sleeve. So match them together. Just put your hand inside the way I'm showing you here. From the neckline, just insert your hand inside and bring it out from the sleeve area and do it like this. And then you place this on top of it this way and then you mash it around the sleeve opening. And then you join together with half inch seam allowance. Join together with half inch seam allowance all around. If there's any excess, feel free to place it all around the circumference. If there's any excess. There will be no shortage, but there can be excess. <laughs> so if there's any excess, you can place it around like so. Then you do the same thing to the second side. No excess and no shortage is exactly the circumference. Now it's for you to weave this circumference weaving machine and then you weave you can see half weave Thank you.